What's up, YouTubers? Welcome to my channel, Mr. Reef Buster. This is the episode 3 of the um, 10 Gallon Nano Reef Project. Um, so here it is, guys. I finished aquascaping my 10 gallon nano reef um here it is with the final aquascape and the, all the rocks being finally added to it this video i mean it may look a little you know full it's not full screen because this was um video i put up on instagram from my phone so apologize about the size of the video but in a few seconds i'll show you guys the the way the tank looks right now because this video was done two weeks ago right after i did the did the finish the aquascape right after i finished i just did the video and in a few seconds i'll i'll show you guys what it looks like today uh two weeks um since the final aquascape and a month after since the full cycle uh process so i just wanted to show you guys what it looked like right after i finished it so here it is this is the way the tank looks right now um i mean overall i'm happy with this aquascape um it came out the way i wanted it to come out um you know i can have a variety of different corals in this tank now um the left side was already established i like the way the left side looks um the right side came out good as well uh I, on, if you look on the right side all the way on the right i i kind of tried to do a little the floating shelf look um which came out pretty well the floating shelf look which came out pretty well um now that piece of rock on the right was really hard for me to glue it uh, to the main rock in the center that you see the big rock but i really i got it finally got it done i had to use a lot of um epoxy and and glue uh, uh, be, uh, you know ic gel brs ic gel a lot of brs ic gel a lot of epoxy to get this rock to stick to the side of this main rock so it looked like it's floating and it came out good i'm happy the way it came out now the whole aquascape looks amazing i think it looks really good now i'm going to talk about first i'm going to talk about the cost um how much it cost me to get this tank to the way it looks today I'll start with the equipment, I'll go over the livestock, uh, and the corals, and all the expenses, and everything, I'll go over everything. Now keep in mind, you don't have to go with all the equipments that I went with, you can go with even more expensive ones, or even cheaper options, it's up to you, you know, it's your preference. So this is the way I went. Start off with the tank, 10 gallon uh, bare bone tank, I got it from Petco, I spent $10 for it. So it was, it was pretty good. That's how much they cost normally. If you pay more than $10 for a 10-gallon tank, uh, it's got to have some kind of other stuff on it. This one doesn't have anything, so I only paid $10 for it. Now, we'll talk about, let's talk about the sand. The sand, I got, um, this is the Bahama Oolite Pink Sand. Um, it's got some pink uh, crushed rocks in there which is which is pretty cool now even though i wanted to go with um, the oolite sand that I originally went with i ordered this by mistake but it's not that bad it kind of grows into you so i'm not going to complain about it now the sand uh let's see how much i paid for this sand um 20 pounds of sand um Right now, I'm only using 17 pounds of it. I wanted to go with a thick sand bed, but not too thick, that you can't see the um, the depth of it or the you know how the rock structure structure comes out. You know the height of it. I don't want to disrupt the height of the rock structure, since it being a nano nano tank. So I'm only using 17 pounds of uh, live sand here. The rest is I put it on my other 45 gallon tank. So for the sand. Um, I paid about $28, $28 from on Amazon. Uh, it's called the Bimini Pink um, Sand, and so that's the sand part. The live, you know, the dry rocks all together. I probably paid forty dollars uh, for all the live rock. I mean, the dry rock that I got. You can go with the li live rock or life rock as they now have it. You can go with that. I went with the cheapest option that I could think of, the dry rock, and I cured it myself. Um, I like it better this way. Uh, so $40 on that. 
and the canister filter I already had from before I paid $70 for it when I first got it about four 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 three years ago um, it's a Fluval 306 it's rated for up to 75 gallons so that's what I'm using um, the heater I forgot the name of the company but I think I only paid $20 for that heater but it's a, it's a really good German brand. I for, just forgot the name. It's slipping my mind right now. Um, now let's talk about the the Wave Maker, my power head. The Wave Maker I'm using is a Jabao PP4. It's a newer Wave Maker they came out with it. Um, it's rated for up to 530 to 1000 GPH. Uh, it comes with a controller, which is really amazing. It has a small footprint, which is perfect for nano tanks. Um, and the waves it make the waves it makes is awesome. And you can adjust the wave, the speed of it. Um, the interval it turns on and off. You can control that as well. It has a feeding mode. It has a night mode. It's really good. If you want to look more into it, look look on YouTube. Uh, you'll see lots of videos on that. Um, I'm I'm probably not going to do a review on it because um, there's already too many videos about it. So I'm just not going to make another video right now. So for that one, for the Wave Maker, I paid forty five dollars, which is not bad at all. This is I think it's a perfect Wave Maker for ten gallon nano reef tank. Um, what else? Um, in my canister filter, I am running Camera Pure Blue uh, for better crystallization of water. I pay seventeen dollars for. Let me see. Let me see. How much was it? Uh, Eleven ounces of Camera Pure Blue. Um, so I pay seventeen dollars for it. I order two. One for. Two, I placed the two orders, one for this one and one for my 45 gallon. So that's about it as far as expenses go. I mean, there's nothing crazy. Um, the, the, the light, I forgot about the light. The light that I'm using right now, that light I got from Amazon. I paid $50 for it. It's an 18 watts LED light. Um, it's made by a small company um, called Lumentech. Um, they have a wide variety of um, wide variety of spectrum on this light. Um, it provides great par and lux at a great price, which is not bad, but you know, I'm definitely going to have to upgrade this LED light because this light that I got was originally intended for my 2.5 gallon. Since I've upgraded to this 10 gallon now, I mean, it's doing it's good. It's not bad, but it doesn't have the adjustability I want. It doesn't have the timer that I want uh, because I'm going to be keeping mixed reef on this tank. I'm probably going to definitely going to have one or two SPS. For that, I'm going to need better lights. I'm going to need to be able to control the light, the intensity of it, um, the color spectrum of it. So this light doesn't have that adjustability. So I'm definitely going to be upgrading. That's going to be the next upgrade. Um, I am thinking about a cost-effective option. The only thing I can think of right now is... Um, those Chinese black box LED lights. Now, don't hate me for it, <laughs> but I've looked into them. They're not as bad as people make it seem like, you know. You know, they cost like around $100, I believe, depending on where you get it from. But if you can get the ones that you can adjust, um, you can have a timer on it. If you, as long as it lets you do the timer, you can adjust the intensity, lower it, higher it. Uh, as long as you can do that, you could have a, you know, night mode, the blue light mode. You know, that's all you need is, you know, you don't have to get the fancy ones. You could if you want to, but I'm thinking cost effectiveness and I might go with that, but I'll talk about it in the next video if I do end up getting that, but most likely I will. Um, so that's, that's it guys. That's as far as the expenses go. It wasn't too expensive. I mean, if you don't talk about the corals, um, the kryptonite and the blastamusa that you see, I got them from Worldwide Corals. I got them on auction on eBay um, together with shipping. I paid about $85 for the pair, which is not bad considering I have to pay for shipping and handling. In the future, I would prefer to buy the corals um, from a local store just so I can save the money as far as the shipping and handling because usually it's anywhere between $30 to $40 for shipping and handling alone. 
Um, unless you order bulk, you know, if you order a lot of corals, then, then it's worth it. But if you're just going to order one or two by one or two, it's kind of expensive because that's technically the price of another coral just to ship the two corals. But I got, I was really, um, I really wanted those two corals. They were available. I got a good price on them. So I got, I got those. But in the future, I'm probably going to be getting from my local stores. Um, I'm definitely going to be, so I, you know, $85 for that, uh, for those two corals. And then for the, um, the Wyoming White Clown, paid $30 for him. Not bad. Um, the cleaner shrimp, $30 for him. Not bad either. So that's as far as the expense goes for the tank, so, you know, to get it to the point where it's today. Now, I'm going to be, I am thinking a lot of ideas for this tank in the future, which I'll talk about. In my, in probably in episode four, we'll talk about get more into it. But as far as what I'm gonna add on this tank in the future, as far as corals go, I mean, I'm thinking I wanna definitely wanna get a a red cap, a red Monty, a red cap Monty, a Monty pour in there. Um, they're kind of the beginner version of the SPS. I wanna try it out, see how they do on this tank, and go from there. And also. Definitely going to get some, you know, Green Star Polyp. You got to have those. Green Star Polyp, you know, brings lots of flow in the tank. I'm going to frag some some of the pom-pom zinnias I have from my 45-gallon. I'm going to frag some from one of the colonies, bring some here um, to give it some flow as well. Um, I'm also planning on having a Duncan colony on that little floating rock that you see on the right side. I plan on having a Duncan colony over there. So I'm probably going to get a Duncan coral over there as well next. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. But those are, that's what I'm thinking right now. Leave a comments below. Let me know what you guys think about, you know, what kind, what other corals I should be getting. I'm definitely going to be getting some zoanthids in there. So if you're going to say that, I'm going to do that. Mushrooms, I'm going to add some of, that, some of that as well. So I got those covered. Just let me know if I'm missing anything that you would like to see. Because I want to have lots of color on this tank. That's my goal. Um, so let me know what you guys think. What other corals would be best for this 10 gallon and a reef? I'm um, probably, I'm definitely going to add a toadstool as well. Now, what I want to ask you guys as well is I am thinking about getting a uh, anemone in this 10 gallon uh, tank of mine. Now, I've seen a lot of videos. Everybody has mixed ideas about having anemone in a nano reef tank. Um, most people say it's because they grow out of, you know, they outgrow the tank very fast. Um, but keep in mind, I have a 45 gallons as my backup. You know, if, if I add an anemone, if he outgrows this tank, I'll move him up to my 45 gallon, no problem. So I have that covered. So I'm thinking about getting a rose bubble tip anemone. Um, I love the rose bubble tip anemone. I always wanted to have one. And since I have the two clowns in this tank, I think it makes sense to get a rose bubble tip anemone, but leave it, you know, let me know what you guys think about it. It was a good idea. And, and the placement of the rose bubble tip anemone as well. Let me know where in this tank you guys would think makes sense for the rose bubble tip anemone to go if you think I should get it. So leave that in the comments below. Let me know what other corals you would like to add, uh, see on this tank. And, you know, as far as, the overall health of this tank, as far as the water parameter goes, everything is fine. Um, my cal my calcium is at five eighty, which is in the high end. I'm not sure if it's is if having five hundred eighty calcium is is bad for the for, for for your nano reef tank. So leave a comments below if you guys think five eighty calcium is too much. Um, if it is, let me know how I can reduce it, if there's any way. I've, I don't know if there's any way to reduce calcium on a tank, unless you add corals and they use it up. Um, and my, alkal my alkalinity is kind of low. It was around 6.7, uh, which is quite low. You want it to be around 8 or 9. Uh, for SPS, you want it to be above 10 for sure. Uh, since I'm going to be adding a, a Montipora and I'm, I want my alkalinity to go up, so I'm going to probably going to have to do a water change and see if it, you know, balances out the alkalinity. If it doesn't, I'm going to have to dose, al you know, alkalinity in this tank. Um, but we'll we'll see. It. I'm going to have to keep an eye on it. It'll go from there. Um, other than that, um, only thing I'm, I'm thinking about now that I'm doing so much on this tank is if I should get a sump refugium. 
I know I said that this will be a Reef Nano Reef Tank run on canister filter, but I've been had the time to think about it. And now that I thought about it, you have to do weekly maintenance on this tank. If you run a canister filter, you got to clean the filter every week, do water change. The water change is not a problem. Just cleaning the canister filter is annoying every week. Um, I've been kind of spoiled by my 45 gallons. So I don't have to do water change every week now. So I'm thinking I'm kind of in a limbo, you know, as far as if I should, if I should get it, um, if I should get a sump refugium on it or not. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Um, and that's it. I mean, other than that, you know, we'll see on my next, next episode. We'll talk about updates and hopefully you guys enjoy uh, this you know the setup I have you know leave any comments and suggestions if you think of anything and happy reefing guys and enjoy your reefs and hopefully we'll talk soon bye